Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The reasons marketing is the new sales. More like orange is the new black. (laughs) Now, let me tell you something. Marketing lets you build a relationship with customers so you can earn their trust and they can pay, stay, and refer. When people pay, stay, and refer, you know, you get a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But maybe before we get into the three reasons why marketing is a new sales, I just want to find out from you. Does this actually sound like your business at the moment? Do you spend most of your days maybe working by yourself on a computer, in a, on a table, on your kitchen, a table that you created during lockdown and now that has just become your permanent uh, place to be? Or do you spend the last moments on your pillow at night worried about how you're going to get clients? Or do you actually start feeling the pinch of the rising ad costs or any change in Facebook's algorithm um, that, that will derail your marketing strategy? Or are you secretly afraid right now that there's going to be a lockdown uh, as soon as you know you finish listening to this podcast and you turn on the radio, somebody's going to be talking about, oh, okay, things have shut down now. Or do you actually worry that when this lockdown happens, you lose all your clients because everything else is closed and nobody really wants what you're selling anyway? Do you end up chasing potential clients, asking them if they've read your proposal, Um, and they're probably just ghosting you right now. And do you just, um, you know, sit there wondering if people are actually seeing your stuff without them being honest about whether they're in or out, or do your clients just simply go to somebody else just because they're cheaper? Does that work? Does that, is that happening in your business right now? Oh, Have you heard about that new social media craze that your business hasn't been involved in and you're totally missing out? Do you have some clients who frankly don't even pay you even if you are working your butt off? Hmm? Let me ask you something right now. If you took two months off, where would your business be if you came back? Would you have a business to come back to? Do you constantly need to be buying into cheap leads or cheap marketing strategies or tactics just to get by? Do you sometimes feel like you have to take in any client just so you can manage your cash flow system and pay whatever rego or insurance bill that came up yesterday? Or do you sometimes have to take the next client with a credit card and a pulse? Even if you're going to regret it later because they don't even appreciate the work that is being done and they don't pay you on time. One last thing. Do you ever find yourself at some lame conference or networking events just doing the dog and pony show, talking to people that have no need for your services at all and will never, you know, mess with your content or let alone just download whatever a report that you might have. Well, build it, they will they will come, they say. Start a business and you'll be all right, they say. What if all this could be turned around? Because let me tell you something, we're living in a different world right now and it's not the same as it used to be. You know, there's some old concepts that used to work and you need to let go of them real quick. And if you're willing to do that, I'm here to help you out with this podcast today. And also, you can download uh, our free report on www.livelongdigital.com.au forward slash report. What if your service business would actually be 
totally different to what I was explaining later on. I'm so glad you didn't tune out because I was actually hearing myself sleep while I was talking about all those things that could be happening in your business right now. What if it didn't have to be like that? What if there was a better and easier way? What if you could have all the benefits of actual recurring cash flow? Do you even know what that is? It's the sweetest thing, man, where you actually just do the work once and you get paid for ever and ever and ever and ever. Have you ever found that? Do you know what that is? I tell you, it, it, it exists. And you might be thinking, oh, I'm a coach. I can only do things once. Nah, man, productize your business. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that if you subscribe to this podcast, you know. And what if you actually had time and freedom together? You know, I just sit down every single day in my business and I record this podcast and then maybe you're listening to it later on, maybe three, four years out, but I did it once and this will still be a great source of leads for me perpetually, you know? So I've created freedom within my business. What if every client that you spoke to was already pre-sold before you even got on the phone with them? Hmm? What if you didn't even have to put your entire financial livelihood in the hands of Facebook or Google? You know, speaking of <laughs> speaking of which, I once got my Facebook cancelled and I felt like, wow, how am I going to survive? How am I going to get leads? But now I don't, I don't need those platforms anymore. I use those platforms as tools. I don't need them. So I'll teach you how to do all of that. What if you could actually choose only the clients who you really vibed with and you only had clients simply because you believed in what they were selling, not because they're paying your bills? What if you weren't dependent on ads or posting regularly on social media in the first place? What if none of that needed to happen in your business for you for it to be profitable and enjoyable? Let me tell you something. If you do marketing right, it will help you build relationships with customers and then you will earn their trust because people do business with those they know, like, and trust. And let me tell you something. If people know, like, and trust you, they will spend a lot of time with you. You know, back in the time, sales have long been regarded as the driving force of business, as as they should, right? You know, because if not, if no sale has happened, you know, there's there's no business that is okay. Now, if you don't have sales, revenue, or cash flow, your business ceases to exist. How do you pay those bills we were talking about earlier? So it makes sense to celebrate, you know, uh, completing monetary transactions within your business as that now becomes the KPI of whether you're actually doing great business or not. If people or money is exchanging hands, you know, and that's the intrinsic sort of sign that your business is doing well, you know, and somewhere along the line, though, that concept of sell became really idealized because it's easy to measure and it got over celebrated. And this idea If you were to coerce, you know, the adversary into your uh, proposition, then you've won, you know, that, that if you got people to accept your, um, you know, ideas or people to download your stuff or to buy from you. But let me tell you something, that's just the tip of the iceberg, because if you long for, uh, sales, it, it, it creates this imbalance where you just want to do enough just to get somebody to give you that money. Because lusting after sales have driven uh, what should be a peaceful process with no coercion or psychological manipulation into one that is now riddled with slimy tactics and strategies. You know, that's why nobody trusts salespeople. You know, the customer actually now becomes timid and retreats way deeper inside their shell to comfort and security, you know, which creates inertia. People end up not doing anything because they're afraid um, they, they would be um, coerced into buying a used car. You know, that's why there's those derogatory statements like used car salesmen or, um, you know, you know um, snake oil salespeople. You know, they continue to do what's comfortable because of fear of change and the memory of business that oversold and underdelivered in the past. People like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. 
And these days with the number of advertisements, sales calls, or spam, and all this visual diarrhea that we see on a daily basis. Because, you know, we see about 5,000 advertisements a day, you know, according to, you know, I think it was the New York Times that made that arrangement. And they even perpetrate most of those ads anyway, which basically are not helping anyone be do and have a happier existence and it's no wonder that we're facing lower conversion rates from maybe all the cold calls or the door-to-door -door knocking or cold outreach that we're doing now because people no longer trust anything that they haven't been recommended to or they haven't actually just sought out for themselves now mix that with the fact that we've just had covid <laughs> where people don't naturally trust any other person next to them who is under six feet from them. So face-to-face -face cold selling is now pretty much out of the question. You know, if people don't know you and you're not wearing a mask or, you know, you haven't shown or proven to them that you've got some sort of vaccination done to you, then they can't let you anywhere near their vicinity. How are you going to sell to people like that in those scenarios? So how do you drive conversions and sales to your business without being pushy or overselling your product and services well you turn to marketing you know you turn to marketing you identify your target market you clarify your message and then determine what media you're going to be putting out there um, your message through so here's the three reasons why i think marketing is the new sales and how you can actually increase the conversions to your business with that marketing let me tell you there will be no sale. There will be no business to come back to. Remember what I was talking about. There wouldn't be any built of trust or credibility. You wouldn't have a successful business. You wouldn't be able to live a cool life. You know, you would have a lot of stress because nobody knows your name and what you're selling. And in fact, sales should actually have been credited to marketing in the first place, but they wanted to separate it because there was a need for it before. But these days, people can go out and find all the information that they need, and all they just need is to be taken to the next stage, which can be done via email or landing pages or funnels. So let me tell you something. You can actually start using marketing to earn back customer trust. You know, when I started this business, people would tell me, oh, you need to go pound the pavement. You need to press the flesh. You know, bellies need to touch. And I know sales has always been the fundamental part of business. Sales also have been a function of relationship building. You'll hear principles like when you're starting, you know, um, you know, your network is your net worth or sales is the lifeblood of business. I mean, obviously, these statements are predominantly true, but they're also merely facts of the equation of business and life. Either or, you know, this is when sales are credited to work of great marketing that people are capitalizing on the wrong idea. We all purchase based on a sense of trust people buy from those they know like and trust you know whenever somebody sees your website or your landing page they're asking themselves a the question can i trust that if i give you my money i'll get what you promise you know whether it's uh, um consulting training information or expertise or any paid speaking gig if we pay you are you going to deliver on your trust even if it's a cheeseburger or a car or even a cat, you know, with, with, with burgers, people will want to know that I'm not going to be eating some dry, um, you know, no meat patty that is just in between rock hard buns. And that's why they ask you, would you like a cool drink or fries with that? So enough trust must be built up in order to overcome the risk of maybe uh, some sort of untruth or underwhelming uh, delivery, you know? People are always asking, do I trust that this is made of safe ingredients? Will this car actually last yet another hundred 
kilometers without me uh, having to push it back to the dealership. Is what this salesman is saying true? Is this horse an actual purebred? Because if you can earn trust from your prospect and they need your product or service, they will definitely buy. So how do you earn this trust? By getting to know the nature of the person through the interactions and relationship and relations that they have with your content, with your podcasts, with your blogs, with anything that you're putting out there. And you just stack these small dominoes um, of reliability and you're delivering what you say you're going to deliver when you say you're going to deliver it. And this is why salespeople uh, people have been given maybe credit cards and unlimited budgets and told to treat their prospects like royalty so they can show up on time, deliver, um, you know, a good time, build relationships with their people and treat, you know, their customers like they're irreplaceable. Now, in this whole equation, where does marketing end and where does sales begin? And how do we actually use marketing to earn back the trust of the customer now that we can't speak to them face-to-face, mano y mano? Because we are already going under a really massive digital revolution as a society. Let's not back down on that fact. Even our kids are not going to be able to speak to um, people. You know, and the normalization of uh, social networks and people actually getting married off of Tinder. And, you know, in Australia, when the COVID, um, you know, episode came through, people downloaded their super funds from a mobile phone. So it has been normalized that you can actually do business transactions from your mobile phone. And because it is, we now have new channels and a new mindset to sell to and market to. Because if you've been on maybe LinkedIn for more than five minutes, you've probably seen how, you know, snake oil salesmen come in trying to offer you maybe an SEO audit here and they're trying to get your attention and sell you on a discovery call about, um, you know, your your audience or, um, you know, how you can get more from X product that they've just discovered themselves. And it's an, I know it's an ugly example of idealizing the sale and not actually understanding the power of marketing. Because let me tell you something, marketing is the act of creating a relationship with your customer. And it's the act of actually building trust and educating them on your service. Why do you think I'm putting out a podcast every single day? I want you to know, like, and trust who I am so that by the time we get to be on a conversation or on a call, you already know half of my journey, half of my story, and all you just want is to just see if it suits your particular um, you know, situation. So if you truly have a viable offer and you spend enough time and energy marketing it, all of a sudden, they'll ask you for the contract, the invoice, or the bill. And they'll ask you, where can I buy this product? So how do you ultimately start winning back the trust of the customer in this uh, face, um, in this face mask uh, economy? Show them you're in it for them. Show them through customer experience, their customer journey. Show them that you can be there with them every step of the way. This is where the good old show them you can help them by actually helping them comes into play. Because these days, let me tell you something, you don't get paid for information. Information is a dime a dozen. You get paid for implementation. So give people an idea of how you can help them, show them, give them results immediately, and then charge for implementation. Show them how much you actually care, and they'll show you how much they care by the only thing they know how to, their wallets. And tactically, how do you earn this trust from the marketplace. You want to post consistently. You want to educate your audience and you want to add value because we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace. So you want to create small changes in their life before they've even gotten close to wanting to buy from you. Define what the buyer's journey is going to be. All right, so you can create it into like ACDC, which is the awareness. They probably don't even know about you or don't even know or are not even aware of the problem that they have. 
And then consideration is the C, where they have seen you, but they don't quite see the need yet. And then you now start creating the demand. And once the demand is there, then they then convert. So in the, in the process, speak to them. You know, as if you've read their day, their diary, or lived inside their heart and mind. Remind yourself when we started this podcast, was I not reading out or was I not spelling out your pain points or what it is that you could be going through and what it is that you might want to achieve in your business? Was I not relating to who you are and where you are in business right now? Did I not get you? So you want to relate to your audience struggles and give them the hope for a better way. I mean, obviously, sometimes if you can be funny, be funny, be relatable, though, and use this, um, you know, there's there's ways of actually creating that relationship because only people that um, are going to help you are the people that you consider as your friends and drive into that culture and create an unspoken connection. And while you're at it, just craft a plan that ultimately shows the customer that you absolutely care and they'll show you how much they do too. It's as simple as that, you know? And once they've purchased, what's next? You want to create and foster these relationships and don't just end at the transaction because your relationship with your customer actually should start at the transaction uh, point there because you want to increase the lifetime value of any customer that you're working with. Remember, you have paid so much to get this person to come through your door. Why ignore them when they have actually shown themselves up to your door front and said, hey, I'm the one. So increasing the lifetime value of a customer is usually an overlooked way of increasing revenue because you get people that have already bought from you will buy more than um, people that haven't purchased from you as yet. You know, when you first understand the notion that it's actually harder to get them in the door than it is to keep them, then your world will actually change. Because if you have a client list that you... um, or maybe you've got a bank of leads that you're hoping to change into customers, you will notice that your customers, your clients, your current clients are the ones that are more receptive to your emails and everything else than just your leads, you know? And chances are that maybe you're not just a one-trick pony. You just don't have the one service. Your business is, is likely to have potential to do a number of things. And the one things that got you where you are was maybe just focusing on one product or service, but you do more stuff. You probably do, um, you know, in, 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 you, you might just have consulting, but you also do training. You probably have information products. You probably do paid speaking. And if your customers are not put, um, you know, in front of all the modalities of how your business model is uh, set up, how are they going to know how else to work with you? So you want to create relationships with your customers along the way. Because let me tell you something. Everyone loves to be an insider. So we all love opportunities and possibilities, especially if we are already invested in the journey. Because these people have raised their hand to say, yeah, I want to work with you. So you want to use this opportunity to introduce them to the idea that the journey doesn't have to stop when it's over. It doesn't stop at the transaction or whatever product that it is that brought them to you. You know, just avoid telling them that there's more work on the other side by emphasizing the process and making it bite-sized and digestible journey for you to undertake together. Because these people are just looking for somebody to take them home. Look, Look at this. Have you ever flown in an airplane? Every airplane, you know, just like the airlines, they use every flight to encourage you to fly with them again and to thank you for traveling. So it's important for you to do the same with every customer journey inside your business. Because when you show your customer that you invested in their success and that you've done the, you know, the, the, the whole background and backbreaking stuff to make sure that you get them there safer, faster, cheaper, better than anyone else. Man, they would definitely triple stumble and pull, fall and bring on their friends and relatives so that you do business with them. 
you know? Just start looking at how your monthly recurring revenue will increase if you look after your current clients. Because right now you probably have a transactional model, but you can start creating, looking for products for your current clients instead of trying to look for new clients for your products. Remember when I mentioned earlier that you can have both, which is recurring um, income, you know? And then you can start creating, um, you know, different streams of income within your business simply because these people have already bought into whatever it is that you're putting out there. Because uh, cause sales and marketing have always been linked. There's never been this distinction that, okay, we've done the transaction, that's it. You constantly have to be marketing to these clients so that you can show them that you are the ultimate solution for whatever it is that they're looking for. I learned this from uh, George Bryant, you know, uh, that relationships are the heart of all marketing. So in essence, sales uh, people who are winning, you know, who are actually whining and dining their customers, they're actually marketing because you're not selling 24 seven. Because when you create relationships and you're, help, and you're educating your prospects, you are helping them understand what your business can deliver. These are essential components to business and they actually drives sales forward because we always repeat this, that people will buy from those that they know, like, and trust. So it is marketing all around, but we're just doing it in a way that helps people be, do, and have a happier existence in the process. So as a coach, consultant, or service business owner, we never know which marketing asset or channel is going to reach your customer and cause them to actually buy from you. We just know that um, if we've earned their trust and we prove that our service or product works and we eventually, you know, get them to stay with us and maintain a relationship with them, then we can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Instead of just trying to push sales like a telemarketer uh, to people, to unsuspecting, um, you know, clients that are on a journey, you know, looking for a product or service out there. You want to actually invite people so that they can seek you out when you're gone. So like I said, marketing truly is the new sales, you know, use your um, clients, the people that you already sold uh, products to as informed market research create educational content, um, you know, surrounding their pain points, learn which new products your customers want ultimately and create a higher lifetime value from your customers. Then you will actually start enjoying uh, recurring revenues because it's pointless to, for you to continuously be searching for new customers when you can actually create new products for the people you already have. Let me tell you something. The, your best thinking of five years ago is baggage today. The COVID and the way that we created, um, you know, the world has been created right now. It's, it's all gone. It's all gone, you know? And I know if you've been a coach or consultant or service business owner for a while, I know all of this probably sounds unbelievable and your BS detector is going, bang, bang, who is this guy? What is he saying? And if so, it's totally understandable. I used to feel that way too. And probably wouldn't have believed it either. But except my life and my clients' lives have changed, man, in the past years. You know, we've learned to escape the whole coaching and consultancy trap of actually working for money. You know, I wake up every single day to sit down and, and create this podcast. I've actually escaped the running of a typical business where... Everybody else is doing it out there and trying to post on social media and everything else. I've just used simple um, principles that you also can get in our report, which you can get on www.livelongdigital.com.au forward slash report. I want you to escape the trap of being subservient to clients. I want you to escape having to reinvent the wheel with every new client that comes your way. I want you to escape having to run a business that's even not scalable at all. I want you to escape um, a business that creates a tighter electronic leash to your phone 
an email as you become more successful. Right now, I just put out a podcast, you know, and it goes out there, does its thing, and I hear my phone ringing, people saying, hey, I heard you say X, Y, and Z. Can you help me implement this in my business? I want you to escape running a typical business the way that everybody else in your niche is doing it by simply using the principles in our online prosperity blueprint. Just get the report on www.livelongdigital.com.au forward slash report. Okay? So if you're ready to escape the trap of working for money and being a client slave, I want you to strap yourself in. Because what you just heard, some people might not believe, but hey, this is how we're enjoying life. And if you're ready for your best year ever, where you can actually start attracting highly qualified leads who want what you've got in less than an hour without even writing a single ad, reach out, right? Whatever modality or wherever you're listening this podcast from, there are links within the, the comments. Just get in touch. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.